Hello, Coach McLaughlin. Thank you for taking time with us at Off the Block Blog. Uh, you've had quite the off season, but let's go back to uh, March of uh, earlier this year. It seems like it was ages ago. Where yeah. were you when you found out that the 2020 season was canceled? And how did the coaching staff go about informing the students? Uh, I think we were in a pretty unique position because um, – Coach Spira having the background in microbiology and just a, a passion for, like the guy will literally read um, the medical studies. Um, he, do, he doesn't need the synopsis from you know newspapers. He goes and he reads those. So when this was happening in China in January, he gave it, he gave a COVID talk to the team in early February, and he and he said our season might be canceled guys. And I was like, I was like, Co like we haven't hold on. Like, what are you talking? You're, you're going to depress all these kids that just want to play. But he's, he was spot on, on, on all of that. So our guys were like as mentally prepared as you could have been like, Hey, you know, this is coming. This is what it looks like. He was explaining what the R not was. He was explaining the fatality percentage he was explaining all of these things to our guys and um and he was doing that because we were trying to um teach them in leadership you want to kind of prepare for for the worst um and and have a plan for for the worst case scenario and and i, th I think we did a pretty good job of that um got our guys home as quickly as we could and got them safe um but the, the devastating part was I feel like we were just starting to play our best volleyball. <laughs> and I'm sure there's a lot of coaches that would probably say that too, but um, about their own teams. <laughs> but I, I honestly felt like we finally found a starting lineup and we um, were finally starting to gel with, you know, three or four freshmen starting. I think we had one match with five freshmen on the court at once. So um, that part was, was disappointing, obviously, but um, the, the, the virology side of it, uh, we were very prepared and that's, that's the 100% credit to coach for That's great to hear. Um, one of the things that came out of the shortened season is that, uh, a lot, the seniors got an extra year. None of your seniors took advantage of that. So let's take it, the perspective of, being your opponents having that advantage how, how will how much of an advantage do, do your the opponents that you face uh gain from having these players getting an extra year yeah well we have one guy who, who took advantage of it austin Montaltia. um so he's he's going to be a fifth year but we we do talk about that um there's going to be some guys in the league uh, or in other leagues that are going to be sixth year seniors or fifth year seniors. And it just makes uh, every rep even that more, even that much more important for our current guys. It's um, we're playing catch up against a, a league that's, that's older, stronger, um, smarter, faster, all, all of these things, they have advantages on, on us, but I think we're lucky right now in the, in the sense that we get to train. So it just puts, um, a lot more emphasis on um, those quality of reps and, and um, trying to make up for the quantity that we've lost by just being a younger team. One of the other unfortunate news of the off season is that your alma mater decided to drop the men's volleyball team after the 2021 season. What was your yeah. initial reaction to that? Um. Uh, I was crushed. Yeah, I felt like I lost a family member, um, a, a very close family member. And um, I know they're still fighting. We're still fighting. I, I include myself in that group, um, trying to raise money and try to persuade the right people that need to be persuaded. Um, and I, I think we're still optimistic. Um, but yeah, that was definitely uh one of the things that i'm sure no one had on their 2020 um, <laughs> you know like prediction list uh, the stanford would ever cut sports that's just part of their dna and just how proud they are as an athletic 
um, organization. You know, not only are they good, but they're good at 36 sports. And now they just cut 11 of them. It just doesn't make, it just doesn't add up. Um, so we're, we're optimistic. And I think uh, there's good leadership in the, in the alumni crew. Uh, I think Coach Costi is doing a great job of, um, of putting together people who are, are good at the, uh, the outreach that needs to happen um, and, and the networking that needs to happen and the social media campaign that, that is currently going on. And um, so I, I'm optimistic for them. Um, but again, that was uh, in a, a really, <laughs> in a really tough year, that was definitely a tough piece of news for, to, to hear that, um, you know, some, something that I, I cared so deeply about was just going to be gone. Is there something that the general public can do to help support this cause of uh, reinstating the men's volleyball program at Stanford? Yeah, I think they, um, I think they just started a kind of like a GoFundMe. Um, but I, th I think just, just raising the awareness of, um, if there's anyone who, you know, knows someone who knows a trustee or knows someone who, um, is influential in the Stanford administration, um, then just to kind of speak well of men's volleyball and, and its alums and um, the, the quality of people that come out of, of that program. Um, it's pretty crazy. Just among my class alone, there's, a, there's already a lawyer. There's uh, about to be a brain surgeon. Um, there's another guy got his MBA. Um, I got my master's in education. I mean, so we're all over the place, but we're all making impacts in different ways in a positive way in this world, I, I, I believe. And um, so it's just tough that the future generations potentially might not have that opportunity. I'm going to put you on the spot. I, you, I know you could go with the 2010 national championship, but besides that, what is your favorite uh, Stanford men's volleyball memory? Um, yeah, you're right. That one, that one was a good one. Um, we went on a trip, a foreign trip to Italy. Um, and that I think really started, that was my, after my freshman year, before my sophomore year. And that kind of started, um, I think the just bond that our guys uh, developed in order to like, kind of, you know, it was, it was deeper than just like a, a, a teammate bond. And I think it was that trip that helped. And then my junior year, the year that we ended up winning it, that fall, we spent a week in Hawaii and we scrimmaged Hawaii a bunch of times. And Charlie Wade was nice enough to have us over and, and scrimmage them. And um, then that was, we did a lot of team building stuff over there that my dad and, and Daniel Rasai uh, ran and we had, you know, we had potlucks and, and Daniel was on the, on the ukulele. It was great. Um, so I think those two kind of trips that were longer, um, just, you know, weeks long, um, it, I think it really cemented the, the bond and the, um, off the court connection that kind of helped us, um, in the end of the season where we were just so tight and we were so dialed in, um, I really attribute that it to those trips. Speaking of Hawaii, everybody who knows you knows that you are a proud Hawaiian uh, Kama'aina. So for us that are from the mainland, what does a person have to do from Hawaii to not be considered Kama'aina anymore? What does a person have to do to not be considered Kama'aina? Um, well, I, I lost my ID. Like I've lived in California for so long now, I had to get rid of my Hawaii ID. So I feel like that's probably it. I felt like I, I lost a uh, part of my soul there. Um, I still have my 808 phone number though, which I'm very proud of. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, I don't know, maybe, I think, I think you'd also lose a lot of street cred if you like go to the beach and uh, you know, you, 
you go, you know, you're, you're at Sandy's or something, you go the wrong way on the wave or you drop in on someone and that, that you're not, you're not a, you're not a local anymore. You got to get out. <laughs> All right. Another question that, uh, to put you on the spot, what is your favorite local place in Hawaii for our lunch uh, place for, uh, Hawaiian food? Um, let's see. There's, that's a good question. So I, I break it into categories. So plate lunch, I got to go with the standard, just rainbows. That's a, that's a popular one. Um, if you're going with a poke bowls where, you know, it kind of originated in Hawaii, um, food land is a solid choice. Again, a popular one, but you know, it's okay. It's okay to go with the, the favorite. Um, they're a favorite for a reason. Um, and then, uh, kind of like local sandwich shop would be Andy's. It's in the back of Manoa, been uh, locally owned forever. The, the owner, Andy, um, wakes up at like three in the morning, every morning, four in the morning to make the bread. So it's all fresh and super healthy. I would, I would say that my favorite uh, dish is the local mocha at Rainbows. Can't beat that. No, it's the best. Yeah. Um, there was some good news that came out 2020, uh, personally for you, you got married. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, it was, it was a, uh, bright spot of the year for sure for me. Um, uh, yeah, quarantine, um, was definitely helpful too, because, um, we were doing long distance, but quarantine kind of brought us together. So we, um, spent, I think March 13th was the first day I got shut down or maybe March 12th UCLA shut down and March 13th was everyone else. And I was, <laughs> I was on a flight on March 13th to go quarantine with her. And I was there for the rest of the time. I think we spent maybe one or two days apart during quarantine. So, um, yeah, so that was, that was great for us, for our relationship. And, um, I'm, I'm a lucky guy. What is the biggest difference between mar being married and from single life? Um, I, <laughs> the biggest difference, I like, it's weird. I like, yeah, I can be a, 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 you know, kind of a sloppier guy at home with, uh, you know, I'll leave the dishes until late at night and then I'll do them or whatever. But when she's around, I like want it. I like, okay, I want to clean this up. I want to, I want to make the bed. I want to, you know, I want to do all these little things. Um, and it's that's very unlike me so she definitely brings the best out of me in that regard um and it's just nice um we've, we've had some big decisions to make on like where we're gonna live and you know all all, all these fun things where we're gonna start our new life and it's fun um going through those with her uh, you guys have been in uh the gym for about a month now a little bit more than a month a little bit more than a month. Um, so what, what kind of COVID related changes have you made in terms of uh, ensuring uh, safety for your student athletes? Yeah, I mean, that's a, the number one priority for us, um, for Coach Bra, for the UCLA Athletic Department. Um, I, can't, I can't even tell you how many meetings we've had as an athletics department on, we call it RTT, return to training. So in October, when we got the green light from the university and the county, um, we had to come up with different levels of drills that were safe at certain levels. So if you are um, just coming on a campus, um, you had to do your normal physicals, you had to get COVID tested, you had to do, if you tested, if you had COVID before you came back, you had to get the EKG and you had to go through, um, you know, cardiovascular tests and screenings. Um, and then, and that, that's just before getting out of the court. So the first two weeks, maybe three weeks of training, we didn't allow more than three guys on one half of a court. So everything was spread out and, um, and then we, so literally we're just kind of serving and passing and setters were setting into targets. We, if setters eventually set to hitters, but that wasn't until the second week. And that was, there was like no quick attacks. So, you know, cause that's too close. Um, the guys are getting tested 
Um, well, sorry, those are the first couple of weeks. And then, and then we got cleared to do six on six. And then every day we, we play six on six, the guys get tested. And when uh, coaches get tested twice a week. So, so when we're doing six on six, we, we know for sure that the guys in the gym are, um, you know, COVID negative. Um, and we, we try to encourage them to wear their masks, um, during six on six stuff, but, you know, long rallies and stuff, they'll, they'll, they'll pull them down. Um, but even, I mean, even though they, they've tested negative and we still kind of encourage that, um, on campus, they're, they're wearing masks all the time, but I think the biggest thing that we've found and, and the all sports have found, you know, going from Notre Dame football, which had a big outbreak earlier on in their season. And Coach Broad talks about this a lot is um, COVID isn't really passed during practice or, or during games um, as much as it is during meeting, greeting and eating. So if you're meeting, if you're watching film, in, you know, in a smaller room and there's a bunch of people, that's it's going to get passed, like guaranteed. If you're eating, spending time, you know, sitting close to, on a table together, that's going to get passed. And then greeting, you know, hugs and and um, and all that it, when you're close, that that's when it has been proven to get passed. So the the thing that our, our team leadership had to come up with was guidelines for off the court stuff, because we knew that we were going to be as safe as possible on the court um, through uh you know the drill designs that were like okay you can only pass one person over here one person over there um no six on six until everyone's tested um repeatedly so so our team leadership had to come up with some guidelines okay like how many people are allowed to hang out like how many people can you have someone over if they're over are they allowed inside are they wearing a mask who is it how can we trust that they're safe and I mean, the sacrifices that these guys are, um, are going through, um, this whole generation is, you know, I feel for them and I commend them because they, they're having to spend Thanksgiving away from home. They're probably going to have to spend Christmas away from home. Like they're making some big sacrifices as 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds. And, um, I don't know, it shows how much they, they care about the sport and, care about how much they care about their teammates. So it's pretty cool. Um, and I, I really commend them for, for doing that. One of the players that is no longer on the roster is uh, Matt's kid, Jensen. Uh, can you uh, update us on uh, where he's at right now? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, number one, I'm very impressed that it was great pronunciation of his name. Uh, I don't even think I could get it that good. Um, Mads got an offer to play professionally. Yeah, so he's, I think he might be UCLA's first official one and done. Um, actually, I, there might have been one other guy who played at Pepperdine in the 90s who went one and done on their 92 championship team. But Matt, there, there's a, a, an elite crew of people who've played collegiate ball, volleyball for one year and then gone pro. So Mads has, has joined that um that list of, of good volleyball players so we're, we're happy for him uh we're gonna miss his serve he was on pace to break Micah Ma'a's record for service aces which is <laughs> quite an impressive record to hold um uh yeah we wish him the best I mean it's a good opportunity and um we're we're happy for him and uh he sent Oh, the coaching staff and, and the team just like the nicest email he's a great kid um so so we're gonna miss him you know on the court obviously but off the court i mean what a what a good kid i'm i'm not going to have you make any predictions or anything but um what kind of advice you, you spoke about coach Spra talking about the covid and um or the, the scientific uh, facts that related to COVID uh, back in March, but, um, and you've told us a little bit about the, how, what you're trying to do in terms of safeguards, but there's gotta be some kind of 
advice in terms of psychology that you're giving your student athletes? Can you give us uh, some insight in what you're, how, what kind of advice you're giving the student athletes in that regard? Um, originally, during like um, the first month or two months of lockdown, it, it was kind of what I mentioned earlier, um, planning for the worst. Um, yeah, I forget the, the mindset that Coach Brock called that, but um, uh, there's, a, there's a terminology for it. But um, since then, it's been um, a major theme that we've been hammering home is gratitude. You know, how lucky we are to be here, how lucky we are to be healthy, how lucky we are to have a season. Like this could all be taken away. Um, it, it might be taken away tomorrow. Uh, I, I know um, new uh, kind of guidelines were just released uh, earlier today. So um, I think gratitude has been the biggest thing, you know, just just thankful that our university has worked so hard to allow us to come back. Thankful for um, the opportunity to compete. It was all taken away from us and and we don't, we honestly don't know if that's, if we're going to make it through the season. Um, and so kind of preparing them for the worst in that regard as well. Like, Hey, we're going to train our butts off right now. We don't even know if there's going to be a MPSF championship, a national championship that we can compete for, but, um, we have this opportunity to be here right now. So let's, let's, let's work hard and, and have some fun while we're doing it. Thank you for taking time with us at Off the Block Blog. Uh, we definitely uh, wish you and everybody on the team the best of health. Uh, we hope that there is a 2021 season, uh, a 2021 20, championship. And, uh, yeah, I we'll, uh, look forward to seeing you down the road. Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. I appreciate it. And I'm definitely a, a big uh, fan of all the work you guys do. I think it's great for the game. And, um I'm normally one of the first likes on your guys' Twitter posts, so um, hope you hope you know that and and write kindly about UCLA and me. <laughs> I'm nice. kidding, but but I really do appreciate all your guys' hard work. Um, so thank you.